My guess is that many of you have, at some point in your geological careers, Googled the formula for vertical exaggeration um, that you would need when you're talking about the cross-section that you're, you're making or your topographic profile that you're constructing. And my guess is that you have seen two different answers to this question. You've probably seen somebody write that it is horizontal scale divided by vertical scale, or <laughs> you've seen someone write vertical scale divided by horizontal scale. And that's got to be incredibly confusing. So let's think first about what vertical exaggeration is and why we would use it. So the way that I've talked about this with my students is it's like if you had a really chubby cat, right? And you just wanted to take a picture of its head. You can't really tell a lot about that cat's ears or about the shape of its head. It's kind of, you can't tell honestly if it's a tulip, maybe it's part of a circle. But if you opened up a photo editor or your, you know, your word editor of choice, and you clicked on that picture, you could highlight it in a box like that and you could take these, this side, and you could pull it up. And if you did that, you could really exaggerate the way that that cat looks. Right? And then you would be able to tell, oh yeah, that's, that's definitely a cat. You can see the ears, the top of the head is weird and rounded. But see how the horizontal didn't change? This is the same in both. This has been vertically exaggerated. And we can say that since it's been stretched about two and a half times its original scale, so we stretched it up all the way once, and then about a half time more, this has a vertical exaggeration of one, two, two and a half. All right. So what we're doing when we're trying to calculate vertical exaggeration is we're trying to give boring topography, or in some cases, really interesting topography that just is over such a large area on a map that it, it doesn't show up well. We're trying to exaggerate that so that we can really see hills and valleys and features in the topography. We want to see what we're looking at. So let's give ourselves just part of a cross section. And we're going to say our units are in meters. Give us some nice topography. OK. So um, I'm going to go ahead and bring in some American or English units too. So let's say over here, let's go ahead and find our vertical scale. And let's say I got out my ruler, I measured this, and it was one inch. And I got out my ruler and I measured over here, and this was one inch. Okay, so my vertical scale is going to be one inch is 2,000 Oh, sorry, meters. I had decided on meters. My horizontal scale is one inch is 3,000 meters. Now, when you see uh, someone who tells you, or you hear someone who tells you to divide horizontal scale by vertical scale, what those folks are actually asking you to do is get the vertical scale and the horizontal scale in such a way that this first number, this map distance, is the same. So one inch and one inch. And then what they want you to do is divide the equivalent real world distances by each other. So here they would want you to put one inch and one inch, figure out whatever it is on both of these, and then when these are related to those, divide these by each other. So go ahead and divide 
horizontal scale being 3,000 meters by vertical scale being 2,000 meters. So you get 1.5. If your topography looks exaggerated, your vertical exaggeration is going to be greater than 1, usually. So here we've got horizontal scale divided by vertical scale. And basically, we have done the work on the forehand to get these map distances to be the same. And then, for better or worse, we've kind of ignored them and just divided the real world distances. OK. Now, if someone is asking you to divide vertical scale by horizontal scale, and that's the formula they give you, what they want you to do is not make any assumptions about this. Okay, so let's say that up here, instead of one inch being 3,000 uh, meters, it had been 3,000 meters is 1.5 inches. Okay. Now, for us to use this method, this horizontal scale divided by vertical scale, we would have to convert this, figure out what one inch actually is, which uh, that actually would give us no vertical exaggeration, because that would be one inch is 2,000 meters. Hmm. Well, we can carry through with it anyway. So the reason why people will tell you to use vertical scale over horizontal scale is they want you to use all those numbers. So vertical scale being one inch is 2,000 meters divided by 1.5 inches. Again, using our new scale so you can see why this method would be beneficial is 3,000 meters. Dividing by a fraction is the same as flipping and multiplying. And 3,000 divided by 1.5 is 2,000. So 2,000 over 2,000 is 1. 1 times vertical exaggeration. If we hadn't changed the scale, if we were just going to go back to this um, example up here, and we did vertical scale divided by horizontal scale, we would do vertical scale is 1 inch divided by 2,000 meters. And again, we're going to flip and multiply. 3,000 meters divided by 1 inch is 1.5. So you get the same thing either way. So anyway, I hope that helps you see, one, what vertical exaggeration is, why you might be given different formulas, and that either one, you're going to get the right answer as long as you're using it correctly. So again, if you're given horizontal scale divided by vertical scale, Make sure that your map distances are the same before you divide. If you're given vertical scale divided by horizontal scale, then it really doesn't matter. Just make sure that you're using the full scale, the map distance and the real world equivalent for both. All right, thanks.